Hi everyone, our video today is the first of two describing our Schengen adventure from Gosport UK to Monastir Tunisia. So here we describe our passages from Gosport to Gibraltar via Falmouth, the Spanish Rias and Portugal. We hope you enjoy the film. We had been in Gosport Premier Marina for a year and three COVID lockdowns. It was great to escape. We're out of here now. <laughs> Our first passage was a, was a short one to Newtown Creek on the Isle of Wight and we sailed in company with uh, UK yacht um, with the South African crew, uh, that was Seawalk. Winds were light and it was a perfect shakedown. When we arrived in Newtown Creek, we discovered Australian yacht Blue Heeler, which had also been uh, in the Gosport area over the winter. Uh, we first met them in 2012, so it was uh, fun to come upon them in this uh, anchorage. Uh, we stayed overnight and uh, the next day we uh, headed off, actually in company with Blue Healer, uh, to the west. Our next passage was from Newtown Creek on the Isle of Wight to Falmouth and up the Truro River. Uh, here we're passing Hearst Castle in the Needles. Um, mostly the winds were light, towards the end they uh, came in fairly strong from the northwest. Um, but overall it's a good passage. Um, here we are approaching the entrance to Falmouth Harbour and uh, now motoring up the, uh, the river and this shows where we, uh, where we got to. Um, anchored up on the Truro River is uh, very quiet and peaceful and we spent a day with um, SV Cerulean a Kiwi boat. Uh, we had met uh, the crew in uh, Gosport which is where they bought the boat. We also had a couple of days in Falmouth and then sent off our UK departure uh, letter. The passage from Falmouth to Acaruna in Spain was about uh, 440 nautical miles by our route and our track over the ground was 460. It took us uh, four and a half days almost exactly. Uh, the winds were pretty light, mostly east northeasterly. Um, the maximum wind speed we had was 22 knots, and um, we never had to reef the main. Amazing. Um, the swell was up to two meters, which uh, certainly didn't help us in the light air. We ended up uh, motoring for nearly a day out of the four days. The weather for the passage was initially uh, overcast and uh, pretty cold. Uh, one of the main features of the passage is crossing the major shipping lane between Ushant and uh, Finisterre. We were actually bounced off it once and jibed away when um, we found a, uh, a gas platform uh, under tow uh, right in our path, uh, surrounded by a host of other vessels. Um, but so uh, once across that was that and um, gradually the weather cleared. The it's always great fun to be visited by dolphins at sea. Uh, these ones, uh, there are about 20 to 30, uh, passed across our bow about half a mile away, clearly on a mission to go somewhere. Um, and then they uh, disappeared and a minute later they, they all um, came in from our quarter um, remaining underwater until they were cast under the boat and then started playing in, in the bow wave. That, that was pretty fun and they stayed around for quite a few minutes which uh, is also um, uh, always fun to watch them uh, do, their, do their thing, they're amazing creatures.
so we're just arriving in our Karuna, uh, going into the marina there. So this was our introduction to Spain and Galicia, which had wonderful culture, great food, lots of history, really lovely buildings. We also spent a very enjoyable evening with the OCC Port Officer Anton at the Rio Club Nautico. Um, yep, absolutely wonderful place to rest after a Biscay crossing. The 50 mile passage from Acaruna to uh, Rio de Camarinos it was um, uh, pretty nice, started off with light winds and a uh, thunderstorm passed behind us giving us winds up to 30 knots. But once we anchored it was quite sunny and uh, pleasant. Uh, the wind was still cool, the water still pretty cold, but the anchorages were pretty scenic. Um, from there we sailed to Ria de Muros, passing Cape Finisterre. The uh, landscape along the coast is uh, quite dramatic and uh, the southern part of, uh, of the trip reminded us of uh, the West Australian coast uh, down towards Albany. Uh, the anchorages in uh, the northwestern side of uh, Rio de Muros were very nice uh, with good holding and we enjoyed a few nights there. in Marina must have been one of the friendliest marinas we've encountered. From Manolo, the giant welcoming dolphin that comes out to greet boats, to the super friendly helpful marine staff and the OCC Port Officer Carmilla. What a stunning location. After a few days at Porto Sin, we then slowly made our way through the Galician rears, enjoying the lovely scenery along with the many brightly coloured fishing boats whilst all the time looking out for fishing pots. Our marina in Vigo was located right in the centre of town, so it was really easy to get ashore and explore the town and its many attractions. We were particularly impressed with the Museum of Contemporary Art, and we also visited the old castle. The climb is definitely worthwhile to get the great views from the top of the castle. We also spent some time in the old town, enjoying some fantastic tapas on the way. The Galicians really love their sculpture and we've noticed in many places that they have several parks full of all sorts of interesting creations. Vigo was no exception. Bayona was one of the many highlights of our trip and we stayed there for nearly two weeks. There's many monuments commemorating Bayona's nautical heritage and its role in the European voyages to the Americas. Its ancient castle overlooks our marina and there were many coastal walks where we could appreciate the scenic and dramatic Atlantic coastline.
The old town also boasts many wonderful bodegas where we enjoyed some wonderful tapas, the local beer Estrella, and some local wines such as Alberino, Godeo, and Lencia. This was going to be our last stop in Spain for a while. We were going to be going through Portugal next, and our next stop would be Porto. The passage from Bayona to Lexos, just north of Porto, was pretty good. We were finally in the uh, northerlies or Nortadas, and um, uh, they start off very light each morning and come in kind of like a sea breeze. Um, and we had a very good sail down there. This is entering Lexos Harbour, which is a big um, commercial port, but gives very good shelter to yachts. And uh, we anchored just off the marina, and the next day moved into the marina for uh, one or two nights. After spending a day exploring Lesos, where our yacht was berthed, we took a bus the next day to Porto and spent the day marvelling at the wonderfully tiled buildings, the breathtakingly beautiful Liveria Lello, and crossed the Daro River on the scarily high Don Luis Bridge to the Port Carves on the south side. No visit to Porto is complete without a port tasting, so we went to the Sandman Cellar, but there are many others to choose from, and I'm sure they're all excellent. The 170 nautical mile passage from Lexos to Cascay uh, was uh, uh, pretty good. It took us about 32 hours. The Nortada got up to about 30 knots overnight. Um, we went well offshore to avoid the fishing pots. Um, on arrival we went into the marina and met up with Ian on the Australian yacht Thistle Do, who uh, is now in the Caribbean. Cascais is the closest seaside town from Lisbon and in past times was the resort town of choice for the Portuguese aristocracy. The town has good rail links with Lisbon so we spent a day exploring Portugal's capital city including the 11th century cathedral. our trip with a snack at the iconic Pink Street, famous for its nightlife. The 140 nautical mile passage from Cascais to Portimao on the Algarve coast um, was uh, pretty nice. Uh, we used the wind pilot uh, van gear in the Nortada, uh, once in the lee of Cape St Vincent, so shown here. Uh, we had lighter winds and um, had a very nice uh, beam reach along the coast of Portimao. Uh, we motored in for the last uh, hour when the uh, winds got very light. And uh, once you're inside the, the sea wall, there's a small estuary, a river mouth. Uh, we motored up there to have a look around. You can see the uh, marina on the western side. And there are some quite old uh, buildings uh, uh, along the shore. Ferragudo was the closest village to our anchorage and it's a lovely little place with narrow lanes, nice buildings and lots of great bars and cafes. We loved our all too brief stay in Portugal but as our Schengen clock was ticking it was time to move on towards Gibraltar. The 160 nautical mile passage from Portimao to Tarifa 
uh, took us about 38 hours. Uh, we had expected to go through to Gibraltar but were caught out as the track showed uh, by uh, an easterly in the Straits of Gibraltar which uh, we think was caused by the thunderstorms in the area more than the gradient wind. It certainly didn't show up on the uh, 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 grid files. Um, Tarifa was an excellent anchorage. We got there at last light, uh, stayed overnight and the next day there was very very little wind and we motored to Gibraltar. It was pretty amazing to uh, arrive at such a iconic destination. Of all the places we've taken Zenig in, I'd have to say that the view from our berth in La Linea would have to be there up with the best, along with Table Mountain in Cape Town and Tower Bridge in London. La Linea is a very pleasant town right next to Gibraltar, has a fantastic fresh fruit market and very pretty streetscapes. As we were situated just across from Gibraltar, we took the opportunity to cross the border into Gibraltar on a couple of occasions. Now you do this by walking across the runway. Our sailing friends Peter and Tony from Tigger very kindly showed us around the rock and we saw all the sights, including Europa Point and the famous Barbary Apes. We also got to see the spectacular St Michael's Caves and also the fascinating Siege and World War II tunnels and we also saw the Moorish Castle. Our uh, set of passages from Gosport to Gibraltar added up to 1300 nautical miles. We were at sea for 288 hours and had the engine on for 27% of that time. We hope you enjoy the video. Our next video describes our journey from Gibraltar to Monastir Tunisia. We visit southern Spain, the Balearics and Sardinia. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. See ya.